Welcome to Spotlight TV, a deep dive of your favorite television shows brought to you today by the smartest people I know and <laughs> me, the dumbest person that you know. I am your host body, your patient zero, your host with the most cordyceps up his nose. This is the last time I get to do this one. I matched with Marlene on Hinge, but she hasn't messaged me back yet. I assume she's busy with the revolution. That's so Marlene. I am your host, Jeremiah Parker Hobbs. And joining me tonight, he was so cool with the gorgeous mountain town he had stumbled into until they said they were literally communists, where he went right out into the cordyceps hive. It's Patrick Schweiger. Hey, man. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Good. You know, a week ago, I thought I would never have to hear you talk about cordyceps up your nose. And then here we are. You created this game. Yeah. Next up, she fights with a baseball bat, just hoping a scout sees her kill Joel with it and signs her to the majors. It's Kayla Costello. Woo! Hi. Yeah, I'm I got so my baseball bat ready. I'm so <laughs> excited to be here. We could talk about The Last of Us for the rest of our lives, so... Happy to do it with you guys. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. And next up, Kansas City used to be her favorite place to get barbecue, but now she changed it to her favorite spot is David's Commune. It's Jerrica Hanna. Hi, Jerrica. Howdy. Ready to do <laughs> this. We are joined by JK Games Podcast today to rank and review our favorite episodes from season one of The Last of Us. And uh, you can rate and review us uh, on your favorite podcast app of choice. Email us at spotlighttvpod at gmail.com about what you are watching, a small list of the things uh, Patrick Kamen and I are watching. We're watching The Mandalorian. We're watching Abbott Elementary. We're watching... Uh, not dead yet. We're watching Under the Banner of Heaven, History of the World, Part Two. My wife is watching Love Island right now. Jerrica, Kayla, any TV shows you guys are binging right now? Grey's Anatomy is back on. <laughs> Let's go. You know, Email us. It, Meredith, oh, no spoilers. But No, no spoilers. But season 29, is that correct? Sounds Something about right. like that. Dang. <laughs> I heard that they are in a hospital and it's dramatic. It sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. yeah Checks out for the last 20 plus years. <laughs> <laughs> Jerrica, any TV so shows you're watching? I'm actually watching Jack Ryan. Mm, My girlfriend okay. was like, you got to go. watch this. You know, Jim from The Office. Now he's Jack Ryan. Definitely Joel not Jim the same. Ryan. <laughs> Jim Ryan. It's very impressive. Also watching The Mandalorian as well right sure. now. That's um, right. And uh, I love anime as well, so I'm watching Attack on Titan. Or I, mm -hmm. I just watched the most recent installment, and it was a uh, time. So oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, we also got Liz in the chat, friend of the show. Uh, TV Rex Swarm. I've I've heard people talk about Swarm, but I don't yeah. know what it is. But I Me need neither. to look it up. Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, baby. Mm, I have that. Today, uh, next week, actually, we are jumping into the fourth and final season of Succession. Um, I also recorded an entire podcast with my friend Taryn on Daisy Jones and the Six, and the audio never recorded, and now she doesn't trust me. So we may never get to Daisy Jones and the Six, but I do have a ton of notes. So email us, <laughs> uh, DM me at Spotlight TV Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, if you are watching that show and uh, let's talk about it. Let's hashtag just release the notes. Hashtag release the notes. And just one word. Should we watch it or no? We should watch it. It's okay. great. It's a little long. It tells like every piece of the story, which um, after succession, I, I wanted to, or succession after the last of us, which every episode I wanted a little more from, like I could have, watched an hour and a half of every episode this ep uh, these episodes i could watch 10 minutes less um mm. but that said it's it's really really well acted um, a lot of hyphens in that one word but i appreciate it <laughs> 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 i'm a book person but i actually haven't read the book that that's based off of um because it is based off of a book but i've heard a lot of good things from the book community as uh as the host of a tv podcast don't read it it always <laughs> makes the TV show worse. Just like uh, just watch the TV show, you know? 
I like to read, I, this is, might be an unpopular opinion amongst book people, but I actually like to watch the show and then read the book because I can picture it easier when I'm reading sure. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially if I like, I like it, that. I want to read more or get more content. Mm-hmm. I vibe with that. That's how I did it with the uh, Game of Thrones. I think a lot. That's of how I did too with that. Game of Thrones. Yeah. 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 That's how I did it with the Captain Un- Underpants series. Right. Um, yeah. That movie really. Yeah. That really, <laughs> really culturally important. You know, the per- perilous plot of Professor Poopy Pants really struck a note with you. <laughs> I really like that movie. Today we are ranking every episode from season one of The Last of Us, and to do so, I am handing the reins of this podcast over to Patrick Schweiger to tell us the rules of this ranking. Hi, Maggie. Thanks, buddy. Uh, hey, Maggie. So we um, we over at Spotlight Games, we've done this from time to time. Uh, it's not an original idea, um, but essentially what we do, we the four of us <laughs> have brought together uh, our individual rankings. So each of us have ranked from best to worst this season of the of television. And number the number one spot gets nine points. The number nine spot gets one points, point, and I compiled all of those numbers together for what is the now definitive Spotlight TV pod slash clickerbait podcast ranking of season one of The Last of Us. And uh, I would and say, way, no, go ahead. I would say it's probably the definitive ranking, like in overall, general, like an international yeah. definitive Maybe. ranking. Yeah, once it's you done. say that now. You say that now. Well, let's wait to see what the results hold. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, yeah. So as we go through, I've put together graphics because I uh, need a life. And um, so we'll, we'll talk about the episodes as we reveal them in our list. Does this all make sense to everybody? Absolutely. Let's go. Why don't we, do we want to jump right in or do we want to do like, cause this is Kayla and Jerrica's first time on the pod. Do we want to hear their That's thoughts right. about the Please. season overall? Absolutely. Let's Jerrica, let's start with you. Yeah. Uh, definitely wasn't long enough, but yes. 10 out of 10 for me, like from me in, in terms of like the general delivery of the, the game if i ever you know i'm i've definitely i don't know how to make a movie or a tv show sure but really? i can see, sure uh, unless there's something i'm doing when i'm sleeping sleep what <laughs> movie making um but you know they had an incre- incredible story to tell and i think for the time they had or the limited i guess episodes like i i, I could be wrong but i feel like i heard they combined like two of the episodes into the first one, like the first mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I think we got spoiled for the first few episodes that were a little bit longer than we expected. And I then agree. we got, and then like the last episode was the shortest. I believe I could be wrong about that too. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's not the shortest, it's the, no, I, I think it was the shortest. I think episode four was the second shortest by like two minutes, but the, yeah. the last one was the shortest. I don't know. I, I really wish like they nailed it. Like I said, they covered the entire first game. Made it a TV show. I loved it. I can't wait for season two. But I still think we should have had like just one more episode of Joel and Ellie just getting into getting into stuff. Yeah. I don't care mm-hmm. what they're doing. They could be totally agree. just walking, talking, <laughs> running from <laughs> clickers. Like it could have been any of that just to sort of build on like their relationship. So other than shawarma, that, I'm, I'm very happy. Eating shawarma in yeah. New York yeah, City. That would have been yeah. perfect. Sure. <laughs> Kayla, what about you? Yeah, I, I pretty much align with everything Jerrica said. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm her co-host. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I think that like, I think that the overall message and the reason why I love The Last of Us was delivered. I think that you you get the message that the franchise is trying to send. And I really love the behind the scenes each episode that really hit home with like, totally encourage you guys if you didn't watch those to make sure you go back and watch those. Definitely want to watch what you guys were talking about. The, the kind of like mini so they did on like the behind the scenes i'm gonna watch mm-hmm. that for sure but they really neil and craig um kind of explain the meaning behind each episode after um afterwards and i think that's really important to like kind of hone in especially if you didn't play the game on the message they're trying to send um but i, I agree with Derek too i think there could have been more and i think the for me the impact is just it's just going to be different playing it versus watching it not necessarily bad like or good one way or the other like it's just different it's a different sure. experience um, but overall, I think they, they really did the overall story and, uh, like the timeline really well. I just think it could have been a little bit longer and it could have yeah. been a little bit more punchy with some of the things, which I might talk about later, depending on how I agree. How, how it yeah. I, so, and you mentioned something that we talked about before we went live. Um, so for those of you in the chat, if you don't know this, because I've found a lot of people didn't, 
uh, in the episode nine um, extra, like if you're on the HBO Max app and you go to like view more on the episode or whatever, there's like a 30 minute documentary about the making of season one. So if, if you're looking for more Last of Us content, they they only reuse like a little bit of stuff from the post episodes. It's mostly new, new information mm-hmm. about filming. So um, it, it, it's it's really good. Um, and then also any excuse for more Pedro Pascal. Exactly. Exactly. And there's yes. some good, there's some good little Pedro moments in, in that. Um, but, and then also something that we probably should have um, said when we were introducing y'all that I just thought of uh, coming from JK games, you go, you both are big last of us fans. So for those of you in the audience that don't know, Kayla and Jerrica play the games, love the games. That's why we vibe so well together. Um, and, as a reminder, we are not spoiling game two by any means. We're just talking season one. Right. Because Jeremiah, in case you've missed it this whole time, there he is. Touch me, Jeremiah. But other corner. Other corner. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll leave it. We'll okay. never. Uh, <laughs> didn't play the game. But why don't we jump in? That's why I don't play video games, by Correct. the way. Yeah. Is that? It's because literally I can't turn in the right direction. Exactly. Uh, so, that's, so that'll be a great one for the pod. Yo, yeah, no, especially our audio listeners. Um, so let's just jump in. What do we think? Let's do it. Okay. Number yeah, nine. Ah, I'm scared. Number nine. So what we say is the worst episode of television <laughs> in terms of The Last of Us. That is episode four. Please hold to my hand. <laughs> this one, it's interesting. Looking at the all of our rankings. All of us have it in like the bottom, like three or four. Mm. Uh, so it's I not everyone's it as, worst. It's not everyone's worst, but it it definitely it, it was my number nine. Um, so this aligns with my viewpoint. Yeah, I just I don't know. This is the only episode of the season for me that didn't totally knock it out of the park. I think, and a lot of it going back to your point earlier, Jerrica. This being the second shortest of the season, I think that's a really big part of it for me. Is that like this? I felt like episode four and five in a way needed to be one like really long episode or we needed more in four. For yeah. sure. Agreed. Probably more so we needed more in four. Um, I, I felt like there was a lot of pauses in this episode, like a lot of like kind of just like pausing and like I, I felt like I personally and if you guys listen to our podcast, like we've talked about this, I don't really love the Kathleen like storyline personally. Yeah. So even though like I understand why they did it and why they added like a personification to this group that was kind of nameless in the game, it, it didn't really hit home with me. So that's part of the reason why I didn't enjoy this episode as much as the others. Yeah. Jeremiah, I've what, what this one a little higher, I think, than everybody. Really? Um, okay. I, this was my number six of mm. nine. Um, and I think that this one was for me the uh I know Patrick, you and Cayman talked a lot about the kind of the levity of the of the uh, game being lost in the show because yeah. there just wasn't a lot of the time, and a lot of the levity comes in it, while you're uh, hiding from or attacking uh, these clickers, right? And so um, they didn't get a lot of that chance and i thought that this episode had the most of that uh with between the pun book finally making him laugh uh upstairs sure um i thought that a lot of that was was really effective for me so uh i think i had it higher because of that That's yeah fair, i think sure. i, I, I t- yeah i i totally get that i think for me if it was like just five more minutes of them vibing it probably would have been a lot higher on my list yeah. because this, this is one of those episodes where like, this was a chance for them to do it. And they did some, but I think we probably all agree that maybe we could have got a little more. Yeah. I also, this episode is one of the moments, or this was an opportunity to show one of my favorite uh, moments from the game, which is uh, something that we didn't get at any point in the season. And they've talked about why in that it's a, it's a gameplay focused section. So like it, they said it was hard to like make, make it make sense, but it's in this timeline of the game where at one point you get, um, you, you and Ellie like aren't together anymore for a little bit. And as Joel, you're in the basement of this hotel and it's like one of the scariest moments in the game. There's like this big set piece with a bloater and, and all these, um, infected. And it's, if they wanted to go like the horror route, for a little bit like th- this was the episode where they could have also done that. 
wish they um, would have a little bit more too honestly I mean, some yeah, of the episodes and, felt terrifying to me and I'll, I'll explain later like which yeah. ones but i do wish they would have made it a little more scary the yeah. first episode was terrifying to me like I, like i felt so scared so i wish they would have kept that energy a little bit more throughout the game because or throughout the show because i felt that way in the game like yeah scared mm. same any final thoughts on episode four um, I like the conversations that they have. Like, I'm going back through my notes that I made during the episodes, and I do like some of the conversation between Ellie and Joel, especially around like family and like what family is to Joel. Sure. Um, because like one of the quotes that I have written down is if you've lost all hurt for the world or all hope for the world, I'm sorry, why bother going on? Um, and Joel says, You go on for family, and Ellie goes, So I'm not family. Yeah. <laughs> and which obviously we see this evolve over the season. And he said, no, you're just cargo. But Tess was like family to me. And so, yeah. you know, he's kind of reflecting on the death of Tess in this episode. Um, but I yeah. just now, Caleb, by the way, heard your um, uh, like Midwest accent. Is that Baltimore? Or is it like, wh where are you from? I'm from the South. <laughs> are you? I don't, yeah, I'm from Alabama. I just heard like a cargo, cargo. Really? I thought that, uh, I thought that maybe I was getting a little huh. bit of uh, Wisconsin from me. Okay, never mind. No, okay. no, I've been, I have been interacting with people from the Midwest this week, though, in my work. Like, but I am not from the Midwest. <laughs> I'm from the South. <laughs> that's funny, though. I like just that. good actor. Good at, yeah. good at, uh, good at mimicking. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, shall we move on to our eighth ranked episode? Let's do it. If this is if this winds up being like way off of my personal ranking, um, uh, I'm this entire time I'm gonna be furious. <laughs> I just want to <laughs> tell you that I'm gonna riot. Uh, so well, let's uh, see. let's go. Episode or number eight, episode two, infected. Ooh, God okay. damn it! That's mine. Which, uh, Maggie in the chat. It all, it's also kind of crazy how little he talked about Tess or seemed even that sad. This is something that we talked about earlier because this is like the the very kind of Tess heavy episode. Obviously, she's yeah. in episode one, but this is kind of the Tess episode in a way. And mm -hmm. I I th I the feel like episode, if you will, I feel like they should have had Tess like the, the, the end of episode two should have been the end of episode three. I think mm -hmm. I, I feel like that we could yeah. have had a whole nother episode of of Tess because I feel like and this is something that came in mentioned way back when we were recording. We just didn't get enough of her to like actually care and and mm -hmm, and yeah. i think tess is a character that in the game we end up getting like what three to four hours with her um maybe a little less than that and it's not like she's like our favorite character from the game by any means but it's a character that we like we have a connection to yeah and i just don't know that we got to get that connection do you agree jericho i totally do because like i about to you just sort of play and it's like the first character in the game that you interact with and just sort of like oh this is joel's family this is his person that he's been sort of doing this business with for a while yeah. and yeah like unless you play the game you don't really we we know how important tess is but in the show it's just it's so short um, and you don't really get to see the the ripple effects of that, or you don't get to feel it as much um, yeah. for Joel being sad for Tess. You get a little bit of a flashback in one of the episodes, which I liked. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like there yeah. should have been more. I want to see more action. Tess was yeah. like the the actress is awesome too. I've seen her in a few things. Yeah. Love her. Mm -hmm. Met her. Once. I think it's interesting. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh. This is see. Subtle, this is the flex. problem. Subtle this flex. is the problem, and this is why Patrick has it so low. Is because he's just pissed that he didn't get an extra episode with his girlfriend Anna Tor. Um. Yeah. So he just ranked it really low because he only the got really two. the the Spark Notes version. Jericho and Kayla. I talk about it when we. I think it was in episode two of this podcast. Met her at a grocery store. She called me babe. She asked me for help. And so we've been in love ever since. And Rose, who's of in the course. other room, my wife, totally in on this, by the way. <laughs> right. Of course. To of be course. Super she's, she's Australian. She calls everybody babe. We've been I, she room. really? Does she call everyone babe or just me? And she is Australian. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I thought it was interesting how they do definitely insinuate heavily that they are romantically involved, especially from the bed scene where they're like cuddling each other. Joel mm -hmm. is like a little spoon. But he was the little spoon. No, no, they didn't. No, that and that's the thing is like in the game, like Jeremiah, I know you didn't play the game. Like they don't even like really address their relationship at all in no. the game. Um, they address it more in the show, which is saying something because it's still not a lot. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I, I definitely wish we maybe would have gotten a little bit. I definitely wanted more of Tess. Um, it does feel like, I agree. I feel like it has 
she has more of an impact in the game for sure. I here here's why I ranked it just so much higher. Now, where I, where was it on your list? This Joanne? is uh, episode two is number four on my list. <laughs> okay, uh, I have it so high. Um, I and honestly, I think that I think that thinking back on it makes it higher than it than it maybe was in the moment. I um. He does call her family, like he calls her family yeah. in this episode, and he calls her family in the next episode. But seeing what f- family becomes, seeing who who Ellie becomes to him, and that that actually is family, and that he fights with everything he has to keep her alive, shows me in retrospect that that Tess was never family to him. Like mm-hmm. he might have been her family, and he might have been the person that she stuck with because he helped her survive and because he gave her something, some sense of <gasps> emotional, uh, whatever. I hear your dog agreeing with me. Don't, don't mute your dog from agreeing with me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, I, I think that all of that, plus the absolute creepiest part of this entire season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, central That's mouth true. man, uh, making out with her at the end and giving her, <laughs> Just like a sweet, like it was a very romantic, very weird thing, but it was what she <laughs> had been craving from Joel the entire time. And uh, yeah. this weird tendril mouth guy gives it to her in the last moments. <laughs> that was an add in that I thought was a really cool add in for sure. And it's, it's, I think the other thing too, like this for me also brings in the point of like, I loved this episode and, but I have this at number eight. That's how much I love this too. show. I had it at number like, eight too. Yeah, it it just I I love the clicker stuff. I like that um we got to see like Ellie build the relationship with her even if though it was like in such a brief time and like seeing her challenge Joel's like ever pessimistic attitude mm-hmm. and so like there's uh, there's a lot of really good stuff in this episode. Um I just think the other ones are better. I agree. You know? yeah. I mean, yeah, it's hard. We were talking about this before the episode. Like, there's not to me. I mean, episode four is it's not the best, but none of them are bad to me. Like, I didn't dislike yeah, yeah. like act would be like, I wish I wouldn't have watched that to any of them. But yeah, so that's what makes it hard. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, it was my number eight as well. Jerica, was it your number eight? What episode two? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's last on my list because I went <gasps> from the ones I love the most. Yeah, I did. Oh. You know, I went with the. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You'll, yeah. See, I understand. you'll see my list here in a second, and some of these I'm like, but I love that episode. What? But I'm trying yeah. to think of the moments I got up and like was like, Ugh! you know, yeah. that reaction. <laughs> that you were like, what? One more time. Ugh! Like, okay. Ugh! and Jerrica were texting each other, being like, I one time I sent Jerrica a picture of myself, and I was just like. Like, yeah, I mean, you would think, scared. and I'm sure I did that in that episode, you know, with the clickers. I'm thinking back, like, how did I, yeah, how did that one make its way to the bottom? I just went, I did this really fast and went with my yeah. gut. So uh, hey. I put it there, yeah. unfortunately. It happened. Quick little um, comment uh, thread check. Broadway mom, back again. We love you, Broadway mom. Tell us who you are. We, we can't handle the pressure and the anticipation of it. Um, I love that Maggie was the one who asked if she was here too. That's uh, one day. That's one day we'll, you know what? I, I don't even necessarily want to know who Broadway mom is. I just want to know, do we know you personally or did you stumble up upon the channel? You guys have that's a right. worker? Well, no, we, I wouldn't say Broadway we have like a, 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 like a, a, a wonderful chatter. Like yeah. someone with like really good points and okay. just a random Hell person yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> love it. The reason that we thought maybe we know you is because Jeremiah and I come from theater. So I thought maybe like somehow there was, that's why, but anyway, okay. thank, thanks for saying. I also really, I like to think that it might be my mom and she's like, she's like pretending to be a random person. Um, Aww, uh, Cause a, a B way mom sounds like a Twitch channel that my mom would, uh, <laughs> would definitely make. Sure. Uh, Terry in the chat, what I miss a, so very quick recap. Episode four was our number nine. Episode eight is now our no. Episode two is our, our eight. Oh, see the numbers are confusing. Yeah. Oh boy, oh, the numbers yeah. are confusing me. Oh, no, it makes um, sense when you look at it like this. I feel like. hell yeah. I love theater and have a theater kid. Well, we love awesome. you. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, we're came in we're not theater. a theater nerd, but me and Jeremiah theater nerds. Theater kids. Um, did either of you ever do theater, Kayla or Jericho? No. 
Can't but I've done PPR some too. improv in my spare time. Haven't had hey. time in a while, but I'm not a uh, performer. Yeah. Do we want to play some zip zap zop right now, real quick? <laughs> just kidding. What is that? It's just stupid. <laughs> um, it was a bad joke. Bad theater it was a bad, joke. Yeah. It was a bad joke. Bad joke. I was scared. Uh, I got scared. Number seven <laughs> Woo, let's on our go. list. Episode six, Ken. Ooh, which I'm actually gonna... a little surprised by this. So I uh I rewatched Finally. this one today. I, I was saying pre pre pod uh that this is the only one I didn't watch more than once this season. So I watched it again today. Mm. And I was I, I was a little critical of this episode when we when um like when you guys were recording without me and i was just firing away in the chat because my voice had to be heard jeremiah um <laughs> i felt like there was a, a pacing issue with this episode that like mm-hmm. we get we get that moment of joel pouring his heart out to tommy and why he wants tommy to take ellie to the fireflies in his stead mm-hmm. ellie hearing him and then they have that Um, kind of butting of heads in the room of like everyone in my life has left me or died or left me everyone fucking except for you and you're not my kid like that that like beautiful moment from the game and then like within a few minutes they're like back together on the road again yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. it didn't work for me the first time but it worked for me the second time so this one kind of went up my list a little bit i think i ended up having this at number five this is my number five too um, mine's higher. I'll explain why later. But yeah, mine's but, it's um, number five for me. I think this this kind of Jeremiah to what you were saying earlier about not getting enough of the, the like the levity and those moments between Joel and Ellie. Something that I kind of glossed over the first time was how much Joel and Ellie we get in this episode. Mm-hmm. The first yeah. like twenty five minutes is just Joel and Ellie, and yeah. I mean they're with like that that couple out in the middle of nowhere, and right. like we get but there's so much good stuff and like them around the fire. Yeah, um, talking about the sheep farm and the moon and Sally Ride. And like, there's so much, there's so much good Joel and Ellie in this episode. Um, but yeah, Kayla, what'd you think? I'm curious, Jeremiah, where did you rank this episode? Because this will tell the, me some things. Uh, this was my number seven. Okay, okay. Because Finally I on feel track. Like I do feel like this is a nos- like not nostalgic, but like this is a to me like this really reminded me of like the ideal setting in this world and like what that looks like for them Mm -hmm. which is jackson and i the reason why this ranks a little bit higher for me this ranks for number five is because i feel like it encompasses a lot of like what the message is for this show and like there's a lot of discussion around love and hurt and trusting people and like the the dark sides of love and like what that can do to you Sure. Um, and I think that's a really big message of the show. And so that's why it's a little bit higher for me. It wasn't my favorite episode. I totally agree about the pacing. I think that they could have done better with the end of the episode. I feel like me and Jericho talked about this on Clicker Bait. Like it was a little like boom, 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 like really yeah. quick. Mm-hmm. Um, but I loved Joel and Tommy's interactions. Um, them being reunited was really cool. Um, and there's a lot of great quotes and like we get a lot of nods to the second game in this show, obviously yeah. with spoilers, but there is a lot of nods and I'm sure that plays into why it might rank higher for some of us who have played. Um, but I think that you get a lot of human interaction. Oh, I just my mic, sorry. I got really passionate. For a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you get a lot of, a lot of like interaction with people outside of their circle, which you haven't really got this season. I know this is, this is episode six, so it is a little bit further along, but like you get Maria, you get Tommy, you get these people in this town, you get to see Ellie acting kind of normal for a minute. Um, and like going to the movies and things like that. Um, so yeah, and and then obviously we have some you know little surprises sprinkled in for uh part two for yeah, episode, love, season two. Love those. Um, but yeah, I think that this one just like to me, some of the, like the overall like tension and the message really hit a lot of what I feel like the story is trying to tell. And that's probably why it ranks higher for me. Mm. Jerrica, where was this on your list? This needs to be higher. This doesn't make sense. Why did I do? Why did I make this list? I don't think it was me. <laughs> Someone took control over my body. Y'all didn't stop it from happening. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, this is, I put it at number eight, unfortunately, but I love this oh. episode. It's like my yeah. fate, one of my favorite episodes. Cause I, in the game, you don't get to go into Jackson. Yeah, and they really like open up a lot of uh, doors with things with the story that's a little bit different, um, especially with Tommy and like Maria. Like you, I love that they're sort of 
setting up Maria to be a, a very strong, smart leader in this group. And so almost like, you know, Tommy just like is just trying to make her happy and like live by the rules so he doesn't get kicked out. Um, <laughs> and there's a new like story beat for Tommy and his family. So it's really I love that they were able to because originally they talk about this in the after the episode, but like they had plans to have Jackson in the very first game. Just due to time constraints and yeah. money, they weren't able to get it hmm. in there. It's a whole so. setup. Like it's a literally like a, a whole city that they like basically created for the show. I remember them talking about yeah. it. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's cool. I love this episode. I love how he yells, "Tommy!" I should have ranked it number one just Tommy. for that. Tommy. But I, I understand though, because like there's so many good episodes, it's hard to like, you know. This one to me suffered from uh, this uh, a similar thing we were talking about earlier, which is that if I had had two episodes in Jackson, I think I would have liked this episode mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Like okay. the fact that we the fact that we move so quickly in and out. It, this was my favorite setting of the entire show. Yeah, uh, it was my favorite. Like, yeah, not only from just a visual standpoint, it was it looked gorgeous, but I loved that we had like a an actual at least for now, picture perfect town that's being yeah. run the right way. Uh, at least for, for now it's it, it, nothing good lasts forever, but we see that as communists, they are, uh, they're making it work with the people they got. Right. And, um, but it just passes so fast. I mean, yeah. suddenly we're in the bar, mm -hmm. we're drinking whiskey. Suddenly we're, we're sharing uh, all the stuff. Suddenly we're yelling. Suddenly we're back on a horse and we're out of town. Um, it, so it's I don't a really know. The, dense episode. It was just, yeah, it was just, it, it passed yeah, so it's fast. Of, it's a heavy episode. And I, I like that in the chat, they ask like if we are a fan of Tommy or not. And I, I would like to know if you've played the game or not, because I feel like I'm, I'm more on board with Tommy in the game than I am in the show. I feel like he's portrayed as kind of like, I don't want to say weak. Cause that sounds like, mean but like he's definitely more like in the background in the show like Jerica was saying like maria has definitely taken more charge and he's trying to kind of like fit into this role yeah more mm -hmm. in the show um that doesn't necessarily make me like him less but it is different than it is portrayed necessarily in the game so sure yeah i hope the whole next season is just jackson i'll watch that <laughs> that that Same. show just oh, kind jackson of like a work Days. like a workplace comedy uh yep. where he's he's redoing the gallows each day but <laughs> uh very funny yeah weird funny Cut up like the office you know that yeah we'll call it gallows I, humor yeah uh, <laughs> i uh i said in the in our in our podcast i did mention how amazing it would be to have like a sim game of jackson oh, yeah. where you're like <laughs> it's like a, like a farming sim almost where you're like taking care of everything trying to fight off infected yeah like, let me I'm, be a bartender the tipsy bison Let's yeah, go. give me that. Yeah, it's just a Forge um, of Empires uh, <laughs> last yes, of us game. Exactly. I I do I sorry I do know that Maggie does not play the game. Um, okay. So um, I, I think Maggie and I are kind yeah, of aligned that in that. Sense. That he did he did come off as kind of weak. Maggie says in the chat that it didn't seem like he cared to even try and let Joel know where he was. I think that he probably cared about it, but wasn't allowed to, and took that. For law, but you like, know what I mean, I I think that the the issue with that though is that there is like a really quick line that explains that that's why like he didn't try hard enough to to connect with Joel, mm. but that's just a writing issue. Like that's we didn't get enough. I think ultimately I yeah I I'm kind of like totally neutral on Tommy in the show because we just didn't get enough of him. Right. Um, yeah, that's fair. I mean, he's he's honestly not in the game a ton, but I feel like yeah to Liz's point. Um, you you feel so much more connected to Tommy in the game, even though you only spend thirty minutes with him. Like, I think it's because he's so important to Joel. In yeah, the, like yeah. I mean, he is in the show too, but like I feel like, and yeah, I mean, in the show he's like a very like a pillar of we need to get to here, which yeah. he is in the game too. But I feel like I do feel like it hits an impact more and like it hits home more in the game. But yeah, yeah, I I I'm excited to see if we do get more Tommy in the future, what, uh, what that is, because I, I like the actor. I just, I just don't think we got enough of him. Too many cowboy hats. Mm. <laughs> Rank it low. Let's go. What's next? Burn it. Next episode. Number <laughs> six left behind. 
Wow. This one, I'm, I was a little surprised at how low this ended up um, landing. I, I I misspoke. Last time I said Ken was my number five. Actually, I had this at, at five. So I guess on my list, it's only one step below. But um, Jeremiah, where was this on your list? This was low on mine. Um, but we've talked about why. So this was ranked uh, eighth in my list. And the reason why it's eighth in my list is because I I struggle so hard with um, a, a big dramatic climax and then mm-hmm. being taken away from that for a full episode. That makes and sense. granted, we did not we did have a tiny bit with her stitching him up at the beginning. We had a tiny, tiny bit at the end. But for me, this this felt like um a really incredibly well done nod to the the people who played the game and like a full episode to to give to like a gift to the game players, which for me, I was like, I understand Ellie a little more, a little more, but I kind of already had like an inkling of of why she was as kind of uh, angry and non-trusting as she is, Yeah, I guess. And this episode gave me that reasoning, right? Which uh, is why it's a little lower. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is when, like, for me, it starts, like, I think all the rest of the episodes from this point on are a 10 in my list. Like, the I, th- I mm. think this episode was so good, but I do... I, I did miss that like Joelness of it, even though I, I mean Joel's not a part of the Left Behind story, but I, I wondered if there was the ability to tell the Left Behind story and a little bit more. Like if the episode had been let's say fifteen minutes longer and we got a yeah. little bit past Left Behind, or or even if they did it like they do in the game where they they cut between the present day and the mall timeline of Ellie like looking for medicine and stuff. Like if there was a way that maybe that mm. would have had us. I don't know, but th- but again, like I, I think this episode is like one of the best adaptations mm-hmm. throughout the whole season. Like telling the Left Behind DLC, I feel like it, they knocked it out of the park. I think that for me, like this one is, I actually surprisingly, like I didn't play this DLC. And I think that's because maybe that's why it doesn't hit as much for me either. Mm. Um, I do feel like it tells a lot of like who Ellie is um, and like why she is. Um, and that's why I think it's it's very important and like a great episode, of course, to add in and like make sure is is told. But I, I when I played a little bit of background on me, like when I played I played The Last of Us, the remastered version um, only a couple of years ago, not when it originally came out. Right. I played it right before the uh, part two came out. So I was like I timed it to where I could play it like back to back. And so I was kind of like not in a rush, but like I was wanting to make sure I could play like the part two right when it dropped. Um, so I kind of forgot about this DLC. Um, but this did rank a little bit lower for me. And I think the only reason is because, like Jeremiah was saying, it doesn't necessarily progress the plot line of the the overall show. And that's, I mean, it makes sense because it is, like, extra content in the game. Like, it's not intended to necessarily progress that plot line. But I do feel like it does a great job of showing who Ellie is and, like, why this this time was so, like, important to her. But For sure. Jerica, what about you? I put it at number three. Yeah. So I really oh, yeah. liked it. Um, I am curious, like, if they're going to, you know, I'm, I won't, get, you know, I'm not going to get into part two because we talked about that. But I will say, you know, um, this type of storytelling that we see in this, uh, of course, it was DLC, but this type of, uh, hey, let me explain why. Let me give yeah. you a flashback. Mm-hmm. I just wonder if in the future they're going to dedicate whole episodes to certain flashbacks. Stories, you know? yeah, sure. Because, like, it, it works, but you're right. Like, I don't know if it needed its whole episode, but, like, I don't see another, another way. Yeah. That's, yeah. Why this, that's why the season needed to be longer. And also, like, yeah. I am cool with them doing, like, a Stranger Things situation. Like, if I have an hour and a half episode, I would be, yeah. I would be so Yeah, down. yeah. But, I like, want I, an hour and a half. So out of all the things in the game, I do see why Neil was probably like, "I'm gonna have we got to have a whole episode dedicated to this." And yeah, and I think it it, it sort of explains like why 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 uh, Ellie is, you know, should she leave Joel or not? Should she try yeah. to save him? Like I think that to the point, I do wish they would have uh, 
you know, shown what happened with her. You know, it was yeah, later they described. Cut it off. Like, I, I'm like, why do you want to see that, Jared? I'm like, I want to see the pain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you yeah. never yeah. actually see it happen, not even in the game. Yeah. Like and what she yeah. has to do. So I thought they would do that, but they sort of just like cut us off from that and went back to her saving Joel. So right. And obviously this is important because it shows us a part of Ellie's identity, which is that she likes women and likes girls, um, which is important to her character. So, I mean, like, I do think that it definitely has the impact that it needs, but, but yeah, I think that it's, it's just hard when you get into like all the rest of the episodes in comparison. This is a take that no one else will share with me, but if this had been episode two, I would have liked it a lot more. Like if no, I think I, if I had seen I agree, an, actually, yeah, really, yeah, I think if yeah. I had seen a full episode one of of who Joel was, Aww. and then twenty years later who he is today, and then that cuts off, and then episode two is who Ellie was to who she is today. And then they're catching up to each other and have to go on this journey. I think I would have liked it a lot more. Not, I just I mean, hated where it's set in this. I, know, I really hope they do that with season two. I, I like they followed the game so closely, like in terms of the timeline. Like I'm yeah. Yeah. telling some stuff. Me too. Take some detours, out of order. Yeah. That was a really I good like, point. I agree. We haven't gotten to it yet, but one of the things that I love the most about some of the episodes this season is how much they go apart from the game. Like I, yeah. the, the pilot especially tells yeah. so yeah. much and I love it for that. And, and I just, I left behind, I think suffered from in the game, you play the whole game and then you play this after. So like it is purposefully um, in a nonlinear fashion, Yeah, but it makes sense as a television show to tell it the way they tell it, because this is where right. it would go chronologically in the way that the story is being told. Mm -hmm. but I just don't think it served the story that way. Like, but so yeah, maybe episode two would have, would have been better Jeremiah. Yeah. Uh, or maybe a, a whole surprise episode. I do it the way they did with the DLC, right? Like, sure. Yeah, like a bonus the season out and be yeah. like, Hey, bonus, guess yeah. what? That this been Sunday. Cool. Yeah. 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 I, I can uh, see the I problems agree. with it, but yeah, I, that that's cool. Yeah, so, uh, some folks from the chat, Broadway Mom, uh, I love this episode, but I think others were more important to the story progression. And then Terry, it kind of, I think, sharing this with with you, Jeremiah, in a way, Left Behind and, and Kayla, Left Behind was hard for me because I didn't play that DLC. I enjoyed the episode, but I just didn't have a connection with Riley. Um, mm. So yeah, there you go. Uh, on to the next episode, episode, the fifth ranked episode in our combined ranking the pilot when you're lost in the darkness mm -hmm. episode one i no. had this at number that's number five mine's number five me and mine's... you jerica we made it we did mine's... it guys this is my we're number getting our two. agenda off let's go this is my number two episode i wow. love this episode so much let me get on my soapbox really quick. go get on your soapbox <laughs> yes, yes, I'm, yes. I'm researching my own rankings because i apparently i put yes. it at seven i'm like what i put this at seven this set wow. the precedent for me for like what the show is going to be. And like, I feel like this episode gave me all the feelings that I wanted to feel for the show. It made me afraid. It made me cry. It made me mm. happy. It made me sad. It gave me the whole roller coaster of emotions that I felt while playing the game. And so that's why this ranks so highly for me is because I feel like it really packed a punch for like what we were going to get. Um, I feel like it followed the game closely enough and added a couple of little things, especially the clip in the beginning we get of like the origin yeah. of the virus, which we get absolutely zero basically about in the game. So I feel like it sprinkled in enough like additional content while also staying true to the game. And again, like really honing in on those feelings. Like one of my favorite scenes in the whole series is the like straight shot, like scene where they're in the car and they're in the truck yeah. and they're driving through the madness and like the angles and the, I just feel like it was done so well, like on a production level that I don't know, man, this is my second. I, it really packed a punch for me. I think it just really like led off well for me personally. It, this, when this episode came out, I was like, let's fucking go there. They did like, <laughs> it's like we haven't even yeah. seen yeah. the rest of the season, but I, we're in good hands. I think, with what Jerrica you said about episode six, I think I did this for episode one. Where I'm like, I don't know why this is my number seven because this ain't my number seven. This, yeah, I, this is I, a lot. I higher understand that. Yeah. I think it um, also depends on like how if you're ranking how you felt upon initial view or upon reflecting. It's also yeah. like it, I feel like I can combine both of mine, but I could see how like if you're doing that, it might rank lower, but you felt stronger in the beginning. Sure. Mm. Yeah. 
What about you, Jeremiah? Where was this for you? This was my number five. Uh, and and I could see it moving up uh, higher, uh, uh, like upon a season rewatch. Um, it does have some of my favorite moments. I, I think for me, that shot uh, where they stay on Nico Parker, but you see grandma in the background uh, starting to, to struggle. So good. So um, scary. So, such a great shot. It was one of the it was one of those um, pilot episodes of an HBO show that shows you in about 20 minutes whether you really want to watch this or you are completely out. So my wife and I watched 20 minutes. She was like, I'm done. Uh, it's Love Island time for me. And uh, and I continued on, thought it was incredible. I <clears throat> I think for me, I, it, it sits somewhere in the middle just because um Honestly, uh, it's impossible with these last five for me to yeah, kind of rank it. Like all of them are so good. And if you really told me to to put any of these top five into my number one spot, I probably could make a case for it, right? That's fair. Um, yeah. I just, uh, I, think, I think mine was made this afternoon with a, a tiny bit of intention to, uh, to fuck some shit up. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I... I it, this one was I, it was great, and some of the some of the the best like that one shot in the car, which is not a one shot, yeah. but is filmed like it, it is, like is it, yeah. so so well done. Yeah, yeah. Jerrica, did you say where this was on your list? Number five. Oh, okay. So oh, hey, okay. it seems we're pretty aligned because uh, I I feel like it probably would have been my five if I didn't fuck up my list. Um, <laughs> I because I also like I, and Kayla and Jerrica, I, I feel like you probably had the same feeling too, like. It just, it was such a moment, like when it first started, like seeing the prologue happen was just, even though it's fucking devastating, by the end yeah. of the prologue, I was just like so giddy that this show yeah. was happening. Me too, like, I was like, yeah. oh my God, we jerked together, like, we're like, ah! like, So often, like there have been so many rumors about this being a movie and then a show and then like the pandemic happened and, and it just like actually happening, I think was just, it was a really cool, I will never forget watching the pilot of this show. I yeah. know, me neither. I intro, will say, oh yeah, go ahead, Kayla. No, I was just saying, and the intro, like it's very much HBO, but like I was just like, oh, man. Was yeah, real. and and that very first, like knowing this game, like the back of my hand, and they open up in the '60s, uh, like, like that what? opening yeah, scene, yeah, that was, was just wild. so good. Yeah, that that uh, that opening scene and the opening scene of uh, of the next episode yeah. are the the reasons why. Um, spoiler alert the next episode is higher on my list mm -hmm. because both of them i like they sit right next to each other on my personal list because of the two prologues they're so so well done sure. not only the 60s one but the one uh in jakarta they give you a lot of context mm -hmm. to to what's going on shall we move on to number four yeah number four the finale look for the light episode nine this was my one this was your number oh. one. This was my number one. And because Jeremiah, this was your number nine, wasn't it? This was my number nine. Yeah. Wow. I okay. fucking love this episode. Like this, and the reason it's it's my number one, I was so concerned about the giraffe. This the giraffe <laughs> yes. is a big part of it, honestly. First but like of all, I was yes. I was so concerned about the time leading up to it. Like Jericho, you mentioned earlier, it only being 43 minutes. And I was like, baffled by this and like came in and i've been texting like how the fuck are they going to do this in 43 minutes and like they did even though i do wish there had been more i still think it was paced yeah. really well and like episode nine of the game is the reason i love this game so much like the the conversation of joel and ellie right before everything goes down about like they this new added line which is like maybe my favorite line in the entire franchise now when She's like, oh, I like, I, I get it. The time heals all wounds, and he says it wasn't time that did it. Like, are you kidding me? I could cry right now, <laughs> Jeremiah. That's pretty good. Number nine, Jeremiah, I am for you. Crying accurately. I, I, it's it's low. It's low, man. It, and what, it's because what, what what didn't do it for you? It was it, to me. It was it was probably time. Uh. It wasn't just, time that did it, Jeremiah. I just said that. No, yeah. no, no. It was for me. It was time that did it, Patrick. Uh, I no. I, it just. It was so short, and it and it was it passed so fast, um, and then it was over. And I a lot of times with finales, I they get ranked lower just simply because it's like 
I'm mad at it that it's that it's over, you know. That's fair. Um, but I, I just, well, for one thing, I guess everything was CGI around the giraffe, which made the giraffe to me look very CGI. Mm. We asked that even on the finale <laughs> pod, even though the giraffe was totally real. Um, I, I, I should have it ranked higher just because Marlene is in it. My girlfriend Marlene. <laughs> um, see, but, I don't like Marlene in this episode. See, I yeah, but they. I understand though. It gets she gets but she gets shot and I, I don't like that at all you know yeah I think if I were in the universe I, I would be in that episode but I would only come out after I heard that gunshot I'd be like, <laughs> no, my girlfriend no, 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 no. my god my sweet girl yeah I I think that this episode this episode is ranked number three for me um it is to me like a very well-rounded finale. However, I do totally agree with all of you that it should have been longer. I wish they would have given episode one length to this episode. Mm, sure. Um, and like, I, while I appreciate that they really like leapt off with a really great, like feature length kind of like uh, intro to the show, which I'm sure was like a marketing stance to like to get people roped in to who didn't play the game. But um, I wish it would have been this episode, but there are so many, like me and Jerry talked about this like at length in our last uh, recap, but like, I, I feel like it really did exactly what the end of the game did, which is like, it's supposed to be divisive. It's supposed to be like, damn, like, how could you like yeah. do that? Like, it, mm. and it's like, it's so polarizing for a reason because like, I, like, what would you do in that scenario? Like, how would you handle that? Like, I, I think it really just, like, kind of wraps up the whole thing in, in, a, in a bow. And, like, it's, yeah. it's an ugly bow. But, like... It's a messy bow. It's messy. But, yeah. Jerrica, where was this on your list? It was number six. So, right after okay. the first episode. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I think, it, you know, I think that... I wish they would have done, like... Um, yeah, I just wanted more of this episode. Yeah. I'm just being greedy because this was the first episode that like truly made me tear up was the giraffes. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, because I think it was just like the most iconic thing seeing it be real life. Yeah, it was really for cool. Sure. Um, and knowing that it's about to be over for like two years, I think that emotion got me. Yeah, um, seriously. So yeah, I think I maybe I'm ranking it not as high just because of those things, but ultimately like they did it really quickly. And I yeah. guess it doesn't really take Joel Lawn to, you know, murder lots of people anyways. So <laughs> sure. they it didn't did me in time. the game. I don't know about y'all, but it took me a while to get through. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love how that. they shoot it, though. It's like it's like in slow-mo. Oh, it's so good. talked about this. And, and right. like over his shoulder, that first person shooter. It, it It is really well done. I have a question. You're not going to none of you are going to like this question no, as, as people who played the game. Um, are you are you allowed to shoot the giraffe? <laughs> Rude, uh, first you're not of all. actually. <laughs> Have you you're tried? Uh, uh, I didn't, but I would never would. <laughs> oh, but I was I was saying I just remember what I, I lost my train of thought, but I remember I remember now with this episode. I wish they would have done like um, you know, like they did with the first and second episode, like a like a pre story and have all the like the Firefly doctors like working on something. Like I want mm -hmm. to see them yeah. work on like the vaccine more to make that feel a little bit more believable. Thank you. Like, yes, they, 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 absolutely. They sort of, you know, when they get there, they're just it's still yeah. just like the game where no one really talks about. I mean, I guess 100%. that's part of the, the message. <laughs> it's like I do agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of my biggest things is like, how did they know this was going to be the solution? You know what I mean? The, and that's they like, didn't. Yeah, that's the no, struggle. Yeah. And I I am I'm a heavy TikTok user. I will say that now. OK, but there's a lot of videos on TikTok where it's like, how, why would you kill your number one patient immediately? Like, you're not really running tests. They just got there, like, recently. And what, but, what TikTok? Uh, what are you following on TikTok? I'll have Could to you say that one more time? You. There's a, there's a TikTok where it breaks down, like, <laughs> 
why people kill their patients the first time? Is that what no. I heard you say no. correctly? It's like it's discussing like <laughs> this episode and like why they would immediately be. Like, oh. yeah, she's, a, like, she's big on malpractice talk. Just big right. on like on doctors <laughs> just she really fucking shit up. up. Okay, no, cool. Okay, we're talking about the game. All right, guys, about the show. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. No, but I I still rate this one really high because it had yeah. it had a really big impact for me. But yeah, I don't yeah, know. they're. Couple things. Some of the I, things were like throw in another 30 minutes. I'll be right back. Sounds okay. good. Throw in another 30 minutes because I would love all the like not to get into any sort of spoilers, but like let's let's learn about the hospital some more. Let's learn about who these people are. Yeah. And give but, me a reason. That that is why it is ranked so low. Yeah. You're but, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. I, I do yeah. also wish, like, so Jeremiah, do you remember in episode two? They're in the hospital, uh, Joel, Ellie, and Tess, and they get in the water, and Ellie's like, I can't swim. And he's like, well, like it's two feet deep. Something that we didn't talk about when we recorded the finale episode. The reason that that's important is because it's in this moment in the game where you're going through this like bus depot and a tunnel is like totally flooded. And as you're going through, like because of the way that like a uh, the flooding is happening, there's like a really strong current and mm -hmm. you're on a bus, it collapses into the water and Ellie essentially like you, you think she's drowned. Yeah. And so like it, it matters because there's this like throughout the game, there's a lot of water and like you get this pallet out and like she gets on the pallet. So that yeah, she and that never and, like, it, happens. I do ever. wish they had had like one little pallet reference, but yeah, but, but more so because I wish that they had done the drowning bit in the finale instead of a flashbang because I, I feel like it, it's that like, I don't know, it, it's more... I think impactful because it, it has that like Joel fighting to keep her from drowning. And like, there's just more mm. kind of drama built into this moment that instead was just they're you know, talking about puns and then a flashbang comes yeah. and it's like, they're in the hospital. So I do wish we had spent throw on another 30 minutes, 15 minutes for the hospital, 15 minutes for this drowning set sequence that we didn't get. Like, I do I wish that we had gotten that in the finale for sure. I do think that's a good point because I did not remember that that's what happened until you just yeah. said it. And I think that really adds to you like playing alongside you watching it. Yeah. Um, and I, that I do feel like would have been a lot more impactful than like, boom, here you go. Like, right. And cause like, yeah, you come up from the water. She seems to be dead. Joel is giving her CPR. And then you, you know, you can still get the, the rifle butt in the back of the head like they did in the show, but it's because mm -hmm. they're like trying to get him to stop from, from giving Ellie CPR. And I don't know. It just, I think it's, it's a moment that I think works a lot better in the game than it does in the show. And that would have given us yeah. a little more time. I think that's fair. And I think that there's a lot of things um, that happen in, in like video games that I think uh, these writers did really well to avoid um, like kind of bad tropes and to, to kind of make things more, either interesting or, or more fleshed out or whatever. And this just felt like it wasn't, I was like, yeah. you got one person who you've ever seen be immune and you are going to rip that girl's head open and take her yeah. brain out. That just feels, um, unplanned. Without asking uh, her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, before we move on to number three, I do want to somehow we went that entire time without talking about how awesome it was to have Ashley Johnson as Ellie's mom. at the beginning. Oh yeah. Yeah. God. God. Shout out to that really fucking awesome like i love that they added that in and we learned like the real reason why she's immune uh, which is cool i thought we had an ad there for a second it sounded like you were stopping for an ad do we have Wait any ads Patrick? diva cup diva cup yeah brought uh, to you diva, by cup. diva cup yep. yeah brought to yeah, you by diva cup a lot of our Drake had a great tagline i forget what it was or no it was patrick in our chat what was it dang i don't remember it was probably something like use the code le20 for 20 percent off your diva yeah. cup or some bullshit That's probably like that. right we have um, a lot of our episodes this I'm a, I'm a uh, this season were were brought to us by condoms just wearing condoms <laughs> nice. to avoid having babies in the middle of a yeah cordyceps pandemic you know sure. yeah. yeah or don't eat flour during this yes. yeah gluten-free we did have a gluten-free gluten episode yep yeah our third ranked episode of this season where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Endure. Oh, whoops. Endure and survive. I, I realized yeah. I had taken the share off. This um, is my this, this is my uh number three. This was this my number four. My four. number four. My number four. Wow, we were almost all aligned. Almost wow. all aligned. Um, this I mean this episode fucking rules. Yeah, yeah. it does. Thor speaks for itself. Yeah. yeah. I, I love the 
uh, other like opening the episode, getting something that like we've kind of wished we got in other episodes that let's go back in time only by like a couple days, but let's get back to this point from their perspective. And we get to see like the truck crashing and Joel and Ellie fighting off the bad guys. And, but like from Henry and Sam's perspective and yeah, I think they just, they totally nailed the, the sewer scenes and, and the scenes that happen after the sewers and the whole motel sequence at the end. Like this is, it's another one of those ones where like they did a really good job of adding in new shit while still hitting all of the beats they had to hit to tell a fucking heart wrenching story. I do mm. also love that they added like that, that Sam is deaf. That's not love that, you know, yeah. I love that they add that. And that seems like I loved seeing the pictures in the, the after the scenes credit where like a lot of them learned sign language yeah. during this time. And like how that added to the, I think that makes it super scary. If you're trying to look at it from Sam's perspective in this like apocalypse, um, I think that's crazy. And I also, one of my favorite scenes too, is like when they come up on Joel and Ellie and, you know, Joel is deaf in one ear. And so he doesn't mm -hmm. uh, hear them. And um, the whole bit with like Joel, uh, he has an asshole voice where he's like, everything is great. I love that scene so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really good. I think this episode also like, again, no spoilers, but like, I mean, actually, no, this is like foreshadowing to the end of this series or the end of the season. Right. Where like, one person's life is more valuable to you than than mm. others because yeah. like again like henry is you know sacrificing kathleen's brother to to help his person yeah it's like my person is more valuable to me than your person and that's kind mm. of like how this this season goes um you know ellie is more valuable to him than everyone else um, yeah. <laughs> so that's i think that it has a lot of foreshadowing a lot of like the big key moments but it does what the last of us does where like at the end you just you bury them and you move on yeah, i guess yeah. <laughs> this is my yeah, number that, four okay you yeah, know that i i really love this episode it's it's one of those things where like it ends and i'm like i can't believe we're never gonna get henry and sam again <laughs> like they're they were both so good and it's just yeah. well they're dead now it's one Let's of those not forget um, the bloater scene sorry and the bloater yeah oh no, yeah whole, god unbelievable. yeah unbelievable it's one of those, um, I, I'm going to borrow a phrase from uh, Ringer employee, Joanna Robinson, who said that this show was all about the things we carry with us. Um, and I, I think the thing for me about this episode that stuck with me or sticks with me still is like Henry in his bag, he's got enough room for some food, but he he's going to keep the bag of crayons for Sam. Right. Like the, there are these things that are important to us that we're going to keep in our in our bags that are going to help us survive. And it might not be like survival tools necessarily. Yeah. Right. Um, I love that. And it, and it makes it it travels its way all the way through Ellie having a backpack and and losing the backpack at some point and having the knife that her mom gives her and keeping that knife on her. Uh, like on her person so that that's not lost with the bag. I just, I really loved that um, being kind of introduced in this episode. Yep, for sure. I think that like, I it, also, it does a lot of that. Yeah, for sure. I also, this is one of the few times in the season where I think, and we kind of get that, I think for these next three episodes, which is probably why they're so high in our consensus ranking is, I think it like things working better in the show, specifically mm. the end of this episode with like the sniper scene so much more compelling Ooh. in the show than it is in the game. Like the, the way that they told the story and they're being just so much more infected and setting that kind of uh, plot point up in episode four about um, the Kansas city QZ pushing all the infected underground. And we see like the ground kind of moving a little bit and we don't understand why yeah. if you played the game, you did, but um, because that's something that they changed. Like that, that's not a thing in uh, in the game where all of the infected have been pushed underground. It's just it's a really smart storytelling device for the show that added to that tension. And so that when we see all of the infected coming out of that hole in the ground, it's like the most terrifying thing maybe I've ever seen in any <laughs> anything. So shout out to that. Any final thoughts on episode three before we move on to our that's the second one that best? Made me stand episode? up. I stood up. <laughs> Yeah. The, the what part did you see and when the infected came out of the ground i was like this is mm -hmm. why this is what i've been wanting from the show let's go 
and just all hell break loose and i was just in the the gymnast little child so clicker was terrifying oh, man, yeah. oh yeah kid clicker was great own, uh spinoff show i'd watch that <laughs> just crawling in and out of cars this one did make me audibly gasp at some yeah. points. I was like, oh, like sure. I I will say this, and this is my only like really critique about this episode because I feel like it was done really well. I think everything looked fantastic. The bloater was done really well. The impact of like the wow factor, I was literally like, Ugh. not enough Jeffrey I, Pierce. Yes, I do think <laughs> that they could have added in like some trigger warnings to this episode, uh, especially Ooh. with their like obviously like depictions of like suicide and like child sure. death and things like that like i just don't yeah. understand why they don't do that in tv shows like sure. obviously they have like the rated r and like the little blurb at the top but like this episode was very intense and like i could see how very that would intense. be upsetting for some people who might not know that this is coming too um but obviously it's a post a post apocalyptic i struggle with that word uh show and so clearly shit's gonna go down like you know that it, it yeah. is what it is but like i do feel like you could there could have been a little like without sure. spoiling it a little bit of warning of like what was, yeah what i mean there are things were. that's a good point like there are things that you expect in a post-apocalyptic show but like to be blunt like suicide isn't necessarily one of them like yeah. that's something that i think we could have we could have maybe had a little heads up a little on for sure boop. like yeah um yeah, yeah i loved it i for me this was still this was number four for me yeah okay mm. Any guesses on what number two is? I think it's not. I think it's. Long, long I think time. it's episode two. <laughs> number two is episode two, which was yeah. number eight yeah. on our list. Yeah, number yeah, yeah. two is long, long time episode not the three. Not the strawberries. <laughs> which means episode one is going to be, or number one will be episode eight if you're following along. But let's talk about episode three I first. Sort of, I was actually surprised that this one wasn't number one. I forgot that this one just. I forgot it was part of this story, to be honest, because sure. it was so good and it stood, stood out. And I cried like a baby this whole episode. Baby. So I, I, I lied when I was like, the giraffe made me cry. I'm like, no, <laughs> the strawberries made me cry. The strawberries, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I kind of felt like I was going to be the one dissenting voice to not have it at number one, just because this episode seems to be so universally loved. But I just loved the finale so much because of all my baggage from the video game. <laughs> um, but like baggage. this episode, like this... If I didn't play the game, this would have been my number one, I think, by like by a long shot. Um, I think it's like I feel like we've all kind of said what makes this episode as fucking good as it is. Like these two are amazing. The story that they tell, which is not in the game for the most part at all, uh, pretty much. other than pretty the characters much. existing, yeah. pretty much like yeah. this is what I want more of in season two. And season two, three. let's I, go. Let's like give me more of these stories that weren't on the page uh metaphorically from the games like because obviously when there's a story to tell the people that are telling these stories are so good at what they do i just yeah. want more of it like what, let's take a whole season of this shit like we don't i don't yeah. we can I get back to part two in season three everything in ellie's journal i want to be part of the show yeah, yeah and see, some of, see some of these things so yeah be really cool i might have not an unpopular opinion but like i this is lower for me and not because I feel like I love this story. I literally cried like a baby the whole episode as well. You don't um, like gay people? Yeah, you're oh a little bit. Oh, my God. Like gay gay famously you're a first. I heard it. Famous, uh, yep. But no, I think it's Flip because it. I, I know what you guys are talking about, and I understand. <laughs> However, the story that has been told is so, like, perfect to me that I would be fine with literally watching the exact – like, obviously, it's really cool to get the tidbits that are added, like Ashley Johnson and, and this. Like, I really do appreciate that they added this. And, like, I feel like it really gained a lot of context for, again, what I've been saying over and over again, like, beating a dead horse. Trigger warning. Shimmer. Call, um, yeah, Callus. Why did we uh, need to do or that? Or Callus, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, anyways, uh, I do feel like, like, this episode was almost, like, it was like sad to the point that made me like not want to keep watching it i know that's so weird to like say but it was almost like too sad for me i was like mm. what is this is so upsetting <laughs> like sure. i was like and obviously like tv and games and media like the fact that it can evict that much emotion in you is really a cool like really creative awesome thing 
But yeah, I don't know. This just ranked lower for me. It was a, this was number six for me. Um, but wow. again, it's still a, an amazing episode and like something that I really think was a great addition. And like, even though they, they did state that this was like the biggest deviation, uh, a very important deviation, I just feel like I could have gotten more of Joel and Ellie woven beneath this. I think it really led them to where they mm -hmm. got to. But I think because I, I love Joel and Ellie so much, it was like, I, we were sure. taken away from them like you said in the finale like it was over this wasn't over but like it was a deviation so i don't know yeah. i do miss the relationship between ellie and bill like that's a really great yeah. relationship yeah. in the games ultimately i do think that the show told that story better but it yeah. would have been nice if like we we got a little bit of them it's like somehow but i understand like i this do is the love tv story i do love that this was episode three to really get like a precedence for how things were gonna continue like with with the literal punch in your heart but. Yeah, yeah, Jerker. What did you think of this one? I I think that's why I like it so much. One, it was just you know a great little side storyline, but also it's mm -hmm. just so much stuff that's not in the game. That's my favorite thing about the show: stuff that that's not in the game, or you talk about in the game, but you finally get to see it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, not in some journal or something you read about. It's like uh, fully realized. So yeah. that's why I liked it so much. And it was just a nice. It was what a nice story. It was sad, yeah. but it was a nice story, and it was so just beautiful. Cool. I think this 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 whole episode is like just what the world could be. It's like yeah. it gave you a taste of what it could be if people would just be nice to each other and quit trying mm -hmm. to kill each other. And then the rest of the show is just going to be you know miserable time, a yeah. miserable time. So yeah. I think they I, I think they put in a good spot. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I'm. I, it's weird because. Um, I am I'm like shitting on my own argument uh, against the left behind episode by saying that this episode was my number one, uh, ah. which deviated completely from Joel and Ellie. But but it happened very early. Yeah. And to me, you could have taken this story and taken it out of the show and just popped it on HBO as its own story. And I would have watched it and loved it like it, yeah. it was just a. a standalone really beautiful 45 minute story of falling in love in a in a terrible time um and how you can make make that work or whatever and i i just thought it was i thought it was great i thought it was so well written incredibly well acted i loved the scene with with joel and tess um sitting around the table and eating um <laughs> where bill just has the gun pointed at joel the entire time um <laughs> And lo it looking so sexy uh, on that that table, Joel, in that yes. episode. Are you kidding me? I thought you were talking about Nick Offerman. He, yeah. he was mean, looking yes. very attractive as well. Yeah, yeah, That's he right. brings it. Not like I thought. Offerman. I just thought it was. I thought it was so 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 well done. Um, yeah, that's my number one. Yeah, this has been really hard for me because again, I pretty much adore every single episode. So like, it, I don't take this as me like not liking this episode, but it is lower for me in my sure. general. Opinion. Hey, we get it. We covered it. You hate gay people, Kayla. That's right. I'm not. <laughs> just kidding. I'm also not great with numbers, so I literally still don't know what the number one uh, ranking is. Our consensus number one is episode eight, When We Are In That was my number one. Let's go. We too. Cool. This one, when I first started drafting this list, there, there was a moment in which this was my number one, and then it dropped to number two, and then it dropped to number three. So it ended up being mm. my number three for me. Um, really fucking good episode. Like I, I'm not upset that this is our number one. Um, Absolutely. It, it, I, I, it was something I had said earlier um, about, I think episode five that like, this is just so incredibly well adapted from the mm -hmm. game. They bring in enough, like a little bit of new stuff. Like they, they flesh out David a little more. They add in like the, the culty religion flesh. aspect of him um they like we get troy baker as james and like he gets to be a, uh james gets to be a bigger role and bella gets her fucking emmy, emmy moment, moment. Yeah. like mm -hmm. there's just so much good shit in this episode um and then of course this the moment at the end like that had kind of broke so many people the the baby girl moment is like it's i think right. it's probably from stem to stern like the one of the best paced written acted shot like it, it checks all the boxes this episode mm -hmm. yeah i uh this was my number one i think it 
it literally exactly all the reasons what you mentioned. Like this one held the most like wow for me, I think. Um, obviously, because it's my number one. But again, like my number, my top three are pretty like interchangeable, I feel like. Yeah. Um, but I think that this one is the one like when I really reflect on like what I enjoyed the most, it is this one, which is kind of weird to say, but like this whole sure. show is like, honestly, <laughs> you know, but I feel like you get a lot of like what the show is made of in this episode. So yeah, mm. a lot of great quotes too. So also. many. Jerica, you said <laughs> this was number one for you. Yep. I'm just a big Bella Ramsey fan now. Yeah. So that's, that's why I like this. <laughs> like, I was, it was just finally like, I, I, I wanted more scenes with her and in, in them, obviously, you know, we'll, we'll get that eventually again, but um, in the first game, you know, you, this is the moment you finally play as her in the game. It was such a shocker if you've, you know, played the game and the moment where you see a rabbit getting like, I was hoping they would have the rabbit getting like shot, you know, with sure. a, an arrow. That would have been cool. But that's the moment, you know, you realize like, oh, crap, I, I have to play it as Ellie. What the heck? And yeah. she's so weak. I have to be sneaky. Mm. So the, it's sort of adapted to, to TV pretty well just seeing Ellie on her own and trying to survive and just like how she's weak but she's also like mentally smart. just ready to kill yeah and smart and so like yeah. get her get she's, she's defensive and she's gonna protect herself and, and how much she's learned from Joel in the that's yeah. exactly what I was gonna say yeah, yeah I feel like you really get to see like how much she's absorbed like a sponge from like this time that she's had with him which has been like a decently long time um, also, I couldn't keep thinking about how difficult this part was for me in the game, like sure. the restaurant <laughs> scene. Oh, yeah. my God. Like, I feel like they portray that so well, of, like how almost like inhuman David seems like yeah. when yeah. he's like, like going around. Like, yeah, I, I died behind that counter a few times. <laughs> That's what I was like. Yeah. Yeah. I stepped on I so lied. many plates in that fucking <laughs> <laughs> diner. Uh, that was, is one uh, the yeah, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say I do the I feel like the end of that episode, um, the climax of it, I think could have been a little longer though. Yeah, like, I feel like we didn't mm -hmm. get very much done. The stabbing, you wanted a little more stabbing. I didn't need more stabbing. I needed more I wanted reflection. more lead up to the stabbing. And then afterward, I wanted a little bit more like living with that. Reflection. Like I didn't love the fade yeah. at the very, very end. Uh, yeah. but at this point I'm just nitpicking. Like I'm see. You know, Ultimately, it's the I, number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, exactly. I feel like the ending, I love the shock value of like or exactly where it cut off. I do feel like there could have been more like lead up, but I I like yeah, more so off. I wish there was more lead up than I wish there was more after, but mm -hmm. more after would have been nice. But yeah, I mean, that, that's not how it went yeah. in the game. But yeah. I had this one ranked um second on my list. Okay. And and I would easily have put it number one. I put episode three at number one. Cause I knew about Kayla's personal agendas. Um, but so I just wanted to kind of raise the <laughs> ranking a little higher, but uh, yeah, but uh, episode eight was, I mean, it was insane. I coming from uh, a, a religious family and, um, and also being really kind of obsessed with like uh, religious cults and stuff like the, yeah, me too. the, the Waco, the branch Davidians and uh, you know, just seeing the way that that can, spark with one person who's way more confident than anyone else was really, really interesting to see. I, it was something that I was kind of waiting to see if it was going to happen in the, uh, in kind of the cut of the last of us. And they did it and sure. they did it really well. Yeah. So here is our final ranking. Number one, episode eight, when we are in need, number two, episode three, long, long time. Number three, episode five, endure and survive. Number four, episode nine. Look for the light. My brain is is really jumping through some hurdles here. Yeah, Number let's five, go. episode one, when you're lost in the darkness. Number six, episode seven, left behind. Number seven, episode six, Ken. Woo. Number eight, Ken. episode two, infected. And number nine, episode four, please hold to my hand. Woo. Which I, I triple checked. It, please hold it to my hand, not a typo. That's Why right. That's that? what I, thought, I thought it was. It's strange the name too. of the song. Uh, it's yeah. the it's the name of. Uh, uh, oh, Doesn't mean uh, it's right though. Please hold. I love that great song, song. and great I am song. love you how they used it. Hand? Long, long time. Do you also yeah. love that song? Because I now I can't hear it without sobbing. Linda Ronstadt. Let's go. Um, but yeah, no, I think this is a solid list. I think there are at any point you could shift around a lot of these, and uh, I would still be happy. 
I feel happy about this list. My only qualm is that uh, uh, the first episode isn't higher because I do sure. think it deserves a little bit more. But I sure. also understand you're all. Opinions. But hey, this is the definitive list. There's no going back now. <laughs> yep. That's Sorry. right. Everybody let has us to stick know... with this list forever. Exactly. Yeah. Let us know what your ranking was. What did we get wrong? What did we get right? Yeah, you can drop it in the YouTube comments. You can send us an email, spotlighttvpod at gmail.com. Jeremiah, That's is it. that right? Let's go. Uh, or you can DM us at Spotlight TV Pod on all socials as well. Jeremiah, back to you. Thanks. I got I got nothing. This was really fun. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for um for hosting our ranking. We got to do this again. Uh, Kayla, Jerica, are you guys planning on? I know that you have your your gaming podcast, and I know that Clickerbait was. Um, kind of specifically for The Last of Us, are are we keeping up with any other shows? Are we going to be talking about any shows coming up? Um, we what? don't have any like immediate yeah. plans, but we have talked about it being an option. I think it just depends on what comes out that we're both interested in. But for now, it's this. Just... Uh, once we get an announcement for Arcane, because that's Ooh. you know video game related. Yeah. Like if, as soon as we get an announcement for season two, I'm going to make Kayla watch the first season. Yep. She still hasn't watched it, yeah. which is fine. Don't watch it because it sucks because there's a cliffhanger. You might as well wait until we're, we're going to get the season two. Agreed. But we're going to do that. We might do that. That'd be really fun. I would great. I think you should only do things that uh, that equate to the word clicker. So if uh, maybe oh. somebody's got like a remote control, like uh -huh. click, like the movie, movie click. Yeah. yeah. You could do um, <laughs> severance because they're on the computers a lot. So they're well, clicking on the clash. mouse. Clickety clack. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So Man, I'm just throwing out free ideas for y'all. Severance um, could be a whole thing. Oh my God. Have y'all seen that? It's so I did. It's, it's wild. wild. Yeah. Um, we are coming back next week uh, to talk about Severance. So if either of you Succession. are watching Severance, uh, what am I talking about? Succession. If either of you uh, are watching season four of Succession, please come on and, um, and deep dive with us. Um, until then. Well, in the meantime, where can they find Kayla and Jericho? Yeah. Oh. Well, us, us. Yeah, wow. yeah. We're right uh, here. We're here. Oh well, there you go. We're all right, that's our show. Right <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, you can this. find us on um, all of our socials. Are still JK Games podcast. Um, Clickerbait is just our spinoff. But I would love if you guys want to check that out. We reflect on each episode in like great detail, and we love The Last of Us, so we have a lot of episodes. If you are here and just listening because you enjoyed The Last of Us on JK Games, we also have a lot of content. Um, we have a full spoiler cast on the first game and the second game. We do, a, cool. it's actually a really kind of retro looking at the past uh, where we casted the our fan mm -hmm. casting for the show way back, like before they even Which, announced the show was coming out. By the out. way, if y'all want to do that, you know, like we did for a lot of those uh, movies and other TV shows, we could definitely do season two because there's some new characters in the mix. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, you know, I'm in on that. I would love to have you guys on our podcast to maybe do that mm -hmm. fan casting. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can find us Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok. We do stuff on there sometimes. And Twitch and YouTube. Uh, JK Games Podcast is our thing. And yeah, we'd love to have you. Thanks for having us on. I really... Thanks for coming on. Yeah. I'm glad we got to yeah, Thank this you. This was so cool. Yeah. Patrick? You want to uh, promote your your podcast? Sure. Yeah. We're right now we're on the Spotlight Games Podcast Twitch Twitch.tv slash Spotlight Games Pod every Tuesday for the Games Podcast 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, new episodes hit the podcast feed every Thursday and YouTube at 8 a.m. Eastern. Me and Cayman over there talking about video games uh, and all the things we love about them. Uh, that's what that's what you guys say, right? We talk about video games and all the things. That's your your timeline, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it's maybe totally just, some, all the news I, we care about and stuff that we don't. From like. listening to your podcast, I, you osmosis jonesed your line <laughs> into my head just then. Um, cool. And then, uh, yeah, if you like uh, trash movies, Safe Trash Cinemas came in. Since he's not here, uh, I'll I'll plug that for him. Um, new episodes every Tuesday as well. He's he's on Truth Social as well, I, I believe. If you, if no. I'm not mistaken, oh, okay. um, Patrick, uh, Kayla, Jerica, I'm so. Uh, this was really really cool. I'm so glad that we got to do this. Um, don't forget, if y'all ever need a boost from me, just press triangle, um, and I'll be there for you. Um, thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye.